So, uh, uh, Bill Murphy, I'm with Extreme Networks. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about the um, impact of um, uh, IT on uh, uh, AVB and IT systems. So, um, we're new coming into the uh, AVB world. The uh, so uh, we're new coming into the um, into the uh, professional audio world. So, uh, first, a little bit about our company. So, um, we're uh, a major player in the in the switch business. Uh, just one of these points here, uh, 19 of the 20 uh, mobile carriers in the world use our switches, so we're a major switch vendor. So um, we've also got a, a broad history of innovation, a lot of patents, for example, we just won uh, this year uh, data center product of the year. So why is a switch vendor here at a professional uh, audio event like this? Well, in the, the switch business, if you look at enterprise switching, growth in that is relatively small. There's huge growth in data center business, and we're heavily involved there, but also where growth is occurring for switch vendors is in um, um, other industries that are moving on to Ethernet. And three I'll give you examples are, one is physical security, CCTV. That whole world is going from analog to IP. Another one is intelligent building systems, the HVAC and, and lighting controls. That's all moving on to IP. And also you're seeing it in, um, in the world of professional audio where you're seeing um, IP begin to, to reign. So we see that. As a, as a great opportunity for a switching company, so uh, we're here to uh, participate and, um, and drive forward. Uh, we're heavily participating in the standards bodies, and uh, we see it as, as a, a great opportunity to, um, to um, um, sell more product and, and um, roll out more networks. So uh, Lee talked a lot about the, uh, the impact of um, uh, AVB on, on the network. If I look at it from the point of view of what a high-end switch vendor would say, most of the guys at a Cisco, a HP, a company like ours, would say that with QoS and VLANs and uh, timing protocols like Synky and uh, NTP, they could probably come pretty close to this. The reality, as Lee talked about, is the complexity to set up a lot of that high-end networking is extremely high. There's also, in these high-end high -end networking protocols, there's a lot of nuance. And in those nuances, you get interoperability, but that interoperability comes at, at a price. There's time and complexity to get there. So um, really what you get with, the, uh, with AVB is, for, uh, from an IT point of view, professional audio uh, can now come over uh, the uh, IP network. It's very easy to do, and you get the, uh, the synchronization you need and the, the really low latency. Another big point that we see in, um, in the, the way AVB is rolling out is, not only is it an IEEE standard, not only will it be multi-vendor, but it'll also be certifiable. So, the Avenue Alliance, and there'll be an Avenue, Avenue Pavilion booth at Infocom. Um, there's going to be a full um, uh, interoperability lab with the um, University of New Hampshire. So all of these vendors' products are going to be tested to work together. So anyone who's, who's dealt with MPLS or protocols like that in the IT space knows that there's a lot of subtlety in these protocols, and that certifiability is something that we think is going to really help uh, the uh, IT people. So again, summarizing the top points that, that Lee said, that latency and that, and that um, uh, synchronization, that's not really achievable in any other format uh, through um, normal ability to set up a um, high quality um, uh, switch. The comp complex installs become simple. So that's gonna re reduce in install time and install cost. And for the, the um, uh, IP person who has to support the network, the effort that he has to put out or his team has to put out to bring professional audio over his network, if the network is converged, gets a lot easier. I really want to stress those three points at the bottom, the multi-vendor, the, the IEEE standards, and the, uh, the certification of the interoperability. I think that that's really, really critical. So um, we talked a lot about what the requirements are for AVB. So looking at it from a switch perspective, so the switches that actually go in your network. So the first thing is for AVB, there's actually hardware that has to go in the switch, and there also has to be software built to enable the protocols and enable that chip. So at the um, demo at the, um, at the Avenue Pavilion, you'll see some of the switches that actually support that today. Now the chips are also in other switches that today don't support uh, AVB, and you'd expect over time that some other switching vendors will begin to support AVB, so you'll see it brought more broadly supported across uh, the switching world. And as, as I mentioned again, I really stress, it would be good to have the cert to make sure those little nuances of interoperability go away for you. Again, 
The endpoint must support AVB, and that can also be, for example, a, 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 um, a Mike Snake or something like that. So, so, so you have to have the, the, the uh, hardware capability on both ends and the software capability. So what's the impact on other traffic? So AVB is going to take on your switch the, the two highest levels of QoS. So that's the first thing. Now, Lee mentioned about the 75% of the link. That's actually dialable to a lower level if you wish to. So if the IT person does not want to give you 75% of the link, it doesn't have to happen. I stress again that this is a professional audio event, but video also works quite well over this, so you can really mix video. Lee talked a fair bit about that. The other point of view is some networks are going to go into like a permanent install, like a house of worship or, or something. They may have a other systems involved, like a building, uh, building control system. You may have instant messaging running or VoIP. Those systems can continue to run on top of that network without any problem. Okay? Uh, and basically all this is happening in one subnet, so that keeps the complexity down uh, quite well. Now, another issue may come up is what happens on layer three. So as Lee mentioned, um, uh, depending on the, uh, the latency and the speed of your links, you can really drive um, AVB across a, a large number of switches. But also, too, from a Layer 3 point of view, uh, you don't have to make any changes in Layer 3 protocols. You don't have to disable anything or make any adjustments for AVB to run. So it's very easy for you to work that way. So there are also usage cases where Layer 3 is, is going to be desired. That's like a very large installation, like a giant theme park in that. So right now, the technical working group within Avenue is actually working on those specific usage, usage cases so we can get there on that. So looking at the, uh, the, the, the specs of what you're going to see in switches for this. So again, you'll see switches on the booth. You'll see endpoints at the booth at the Infocom show. So realistically, AV, AVB can run over uh, CAT5 or uh, uh, CAT, CAT6 for 10G over copper. Uh, you can get up to 40G. There's switches at the uh, show that um, uh, can, can support AV, uh, AVB over a, over a 40 gig link. So that's the type of thing that's very useful if you've got uncompressed video, for example. You'll see switches here that can support um, non-PoE, PoE, or PoE+. Plus. So if you need to be able to power your mics with PoE or, or whatever, that's all quite doable with the switches available. Switches go from very small switches. Uh, LabX, uh, Lee's company, makes one with five ports. We make one with eight. And they go up to literally stacking switches and chassis with thousands of ports that can cost a couple hundred thousand dollars. So they go from small port counts, small amounts of money, to very high port counts, very large amounts of money. And there's even some switches that have, for special uh, situations, uh, lockable connectors. So training. So the, the critical point of ABV is it's really a plug-and-play simple system. So for most situations, the devices are going to be able to um, uh, establish their connections and do their thing. Uh, if there's any, any issues with, with higher-end lo locations where there's, where there's concerns about the um, uh, interactions with other uh, I, um, IT equipment um, uh, or other IT uh, services, Vendors will provide training, and potentially there will also be some training from the Avenue Alliance to deal with that. But I really think in most situations, that's not going to be an issue for you whatsoever. Cost and availability. I put the, some of the product names here, the switches that will be able to support um, AVB. And on the Avenue Alliance site, you can talk to the different vendors, and they'll give you a bit of an overview of what's the availability for their switches and what the costs actually will be. So in summary, I think with, um, for, uh, from an IT perspective, supporting professional um, audio just got much easier for an IT professional to, uh, to, to do this. Um, the, um, uh, the selection of products, I think, is, uh, is, um, is um, there's some, some, some good products, and you can get, your, you get, get solutions over uh, running out in the next um, a few months with your systems. That's going to broaden, I think, very rapidly. And uh, the key point for the IT guys is that AVB fits well with, with uh, other traffic. So uh, that's a summary from me. Lee, any, uh, do you want to follow up here? Is there questions or do we go right to lunch? Don't run away. Okay. So I know you're all anxious to eat lunch, um, but there were a couple of questions, and I don't want to skirt them here. So while Bill and I are up here, let them rip. All right, so the question is, is presentation time when it gets uh, put onto the network or when it should be played back? When the network should have the packet arrive at the end point. So is the network going to offer packets to be presented at the end point presentation time? 
The, the endpoint. The endpoint takes it and buffers it. So in that picture I had where there was one switch, it'll actually, that endpoint, um, that speaker, will actually be delaying the audio and then play it back. No, it doesn't, it, and it doesn't support jumbo. Right, right. So some, some of those, uh, those numbers, when you started looking at what the maximum capacity could be, uh, the maximum number of channels, um, those really come from how many samples you can pack into the standard MTU. So uh, Extreme Networks makes um, uh, definitely an enterprise level switch. Um, I'll give you some examples of, of customers. Um, uh, Amazon's um, major um, data centers, our switches, 19 to 20 mobile carriers in the world are our switches. So they, we make everything from an eight port to like literally gigantic uh, switches. Uh, I think the, um, uh, a lot of the, uh, the major, like the uh, Craze Computing Center now for high-speed computing, that's our switches. So. And um, so there's, that, that, that's a high quality switch. Uh, we do because anybody who sells switches <laughs> has extreme Cisco networks and all, uh, everywhere. So uh, yes, we would have that. Okay. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what is in everybody else's presentation, um, but the, the video is still a, a little ways off. Obviously it supports it. Um, Bill alluded to, um, and I'll touch base on this in the, in the end, about in the Avenue Alliance. So the, the plumbing's there, the support is there for it. What we're doing now is working on um, s finding what parts of the standard um, to standardize on, so the subset of that. So that work is underway. Um, and, and, and just as an example, my company, LabX, we're working with some broadcast people uh, to be doing 1080p uncompressed 3G over 10G and 40G switches. So the work is underway, um, a little bit behind the adoption of it, it's a little behind the audio. <coughs> yep. Yeah, so there's, um, Harman is in cooperation with Netgear, so that's another one. Um, and part of my uh, role, uh, so my second day job is uh, Avenue Alliance Marketing Work Group Chairman. And um, I can say that I'm actively talking to a large number of switch vendors. Um, right. Well, Cisco is a is one of the founding members of Avenue Alliance. Um, big organization, kind of hold their cards close to their chest, so I don't know what's going on there, but I'm quite certain when uh, Bill starts rolling out his 40 and 100 gig uh, infrastructure there, that uh, things will be, you'll see things so, happening. So further point on that, as long as the, uh, as long as the switches, uh, that are other switches you have have the the right chipset in them, and you'll find a lot of the the newer uh, switches will have that. Over time, you'll see other vendors support this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, the the phase accuracy, but between it, um, I don't have. I mean, we're talking um, sub sub nanoseconds. So from a you know from an audio perspective of 48 kilohertz um, you know frame clock. Um, it, it is it is sample accurate. 